What's the secret, Max? The secret? Yeah, well, you seem to have it pretty figured out. Secret, I don't know. I, I think you just gotta find something you love to do and then do it for the rest of your life. For me, it's going to rush more. Bottle Rocket is Wes Anderson's first film, but his sophomore feature Rushmore is the first one that feels like a Wes Anderson film as we know them today. Just like Mean Streets is the first Scorsese film that feels like a Scorsese film. Bottle Rocket is more lo-fi and gritty and handheld. It looks more like a quote-unquote normal movie. Whereas Rushmore starts to introduce Anderson's bright colour schemes and quirky fashion choices and planimetric staging and symmetrical framing, all the things that go into those soulless AI parodies. Rushmore is arguably the Anderson movie that's most accessible to the casual viewer. It plays like Anderson's take on a John Hughes high school film. It's the perfect middle ground between the groundedness of Bottle Rocket and the quirkiness of all of Anderson's later films. With the Royal Tenenbaums onwards, he would jet off to his own planet of weirdness, but Rushmore is still very much rooted in the world we recognize. Rushmore introduced the Andersonian anti-hero. Bottle Rocket's dual protagonists, Dignan and Anthony, were likeable anti-heroes, but they had much simpler characterization. The former is a thief because he's too stupid to know any better, and the latter goes along with it because he doesn't want to be a bad friend. Max Fisher is more complex, like Royal Tenenbaum or Steve Zissou. He has a lot of unlikable qualities. He's brash, obnoxious, self-centered, and refuses to accept that his love is unrequited. But above all, he's vulnerable, which makes him deeply human. Shot at Anderson's alma mater, St. John's, Rushmore is a semi-autobiographical story, drawing from the director's own high school years. Like Max, Anderson was buried in extracurricular activities and got expelled from school when those activities had a negative impact on his grades. And like Max, as a teenager, Anderson fell in love with an adult woman. Rushmore isn't as directly autobiographical as, say, The Fablemans or The Souvenir. I see it more like The 400 Blows. It's a heightened, exaggerated autobiography. Antoine Toinel is not the kid that Francois Truffaut actually was. I don't think Truffaut could recite Balzac from memory at the age of 14. Instead, Antoine is the kid that Truffaut wishes he was. Similarly, I think Max Fisher is more the kid that Anderson wishes he was than the kid he actually was. Max is smooth, charming, well-dressed, and brimming with self-assurance. Anderson was involved in his school's theatre program, but I don't think his plays were as bold or cinematic or expensive as Max's. Anderson did a lot of extracurricular activities, but I don't think he was amazing at all of them like Max's. Anderson was secretly in love with an adult woman, but Max has the confidence to act on those feelings. It's an interesting what-if scenario. What if this precocious kid who's wise beyond his years, but still just a sad, scared, insecure teenager at heart, actually tried to pursue a romantic relationship with a grown woman? In a funny parallel to Anderson's characterization of Max as the kid he wishes he was, Rushmore opens with Max daydreaming about the kid he wishes he was. A genius, popular amongst his peers, sipping espresso in class, effortlessly solves the hardest equation in the world and gets carried around on his classmates' shoulders. Max? Here to try it? I'm sorry, did someone say my name? Anderson's M.O. is to set up a cute, quirky story in these quaint little dream worlds he conjures up, like a love story or a coming-of-age story, or in the case of Rushmore, both, and throw in a real-world complication that makes it a bit uncomfortable, like a child in love with an adult, or a man in love with his adopted sister. This M.O., as well as scenes like Max trying to kiss Miss Cross against her protests, add a level of discomfort to these zany, light-hearted comedies, but also a level of realism. It makes them deeper and more thought-provoking experiences that fly in the face of critics who claim Anderson's storytelling is surface level. The love triangle storyline in Rushmore is decidedly unromantic. It's not about which of the two male leads the female lead will choose to be with. There's a hilarious irony in watching these two immature guys fight over a woman who ultimately isn't interested in either of them. I never asked anyone to build me an aquarium. I'm not quite sure how that rumor got started. Rushmore introduced Anderson's ability to give massive weight to the simplest lines. Let's hope it. It's got a happy ending. You're a real jerk to me, you know that? She's my Rushmore, Max. I ain't get her that bad. Mm, I'm a little bit lonely these days. This unique brand of understated human drama can be seen in the most powerful moments of Anderson's later movies. I guess I've still got some more healing to do. I wonder if it remembers me. I've had a rough year, Dad. I don't know you have, Chazzy. 
Anderson got some of the strongest performances in his filmography out of the brilliant cast of Rushmore. Jason Schwartzman gives one of the great comic performances of all time. His turn as Max works because he plays this caricature honestly and finds the truth in his insanity. Oh my god! I wrote a hit play! And I'm in love with you. Rushmore marked Anderson's first collaboration with Bill Murray, whose turn as Herman Bloom instantly showed that Anderson knows how to write for Murray. Bloom's lines have a dry, deadpan hilarity, and he's an eccentric wildcard and a bitter curmudgeon rolled into one. Did you invite that kid to your party? Max Fisher. Come on, Dad, there's gonna be girls there. I'd rather die. Pull your head out of your ass. Olivia Williams in the role of Miss Cross is tasked with one of the toughest jobs in comedy, being the straight man. She has to ground Max's craziness by reacting to the reality of each situation, and she does an amazing job with it. Is this fake blood? Yes, it is. You know, you and Herman deserve each other. Rushmore features some of the greatest comedic sequences ever shot. The dinner scene where Max gets drunk and keeps sniping at Miss Cross's date, played hilariously straight by Luke Wilson, is a masterpiece of cringe comedy. I like your nurse's uniform, guy. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? The montage of Max and Bloom one-upping each other with increasingly convoluted revenge schemes is absolutely hysterical, and it's paired with the perfect musical accompaniment, the Who's a Quick One While He's Away. In the lyrics, the words You Are Forgiven are ironically repeated over and over on top of images of Max and Bloom refusing to forgive each other as they keep exacting worse and worse acts of vengeance. And speaking of the music, Rushmore has my favourite Wes Anderson soundtrack by far. Anderson licensed the work of a lot of British invasion bands, The Who, The Kinks, The Faces, The Rolling Stones, which ties in perfectly with the themes of teen angst and rebelling against authority. The final track in the film, Ooh La La, played over the closing slow motion dance scene, is the perfect note to end on. It's a song about an old man reflecting on the naivety of his youth and the lessons he had to learn the hard way, which is exactly what Max has gone through throughout the movie. Well, love is blind and you're far too kind Don't ever let it show I wish that I knew what I know now When I was younger Thanks for watching guys, I hope you liked the video Remember to like and subscribe and click on the little bell And also seize the day and call your mom and be kind to yourself